I'm going to transition us into spoilers, Simon. So for, from this point on, we will save this until after the film is out. Okay, so you can now you can remove your restrictions and talk totally okay. free. Uh, uh, being the fact that Cole is a new character, I want to know what conversations you guys had in terms of like what his power was going to be when he finally realized what his power was. And um, because he has a significant kill, was there pushback into killing off Goro so soon in a like a debut film? Feels like a character you would keep around for a while. Um, so Cole's, Cole's character development was a, was a process that, that, like I was saying before with, it just kept evolving and evolving and, and, but, but there were some really key ingredients that we were working with. And that was, he was born out of the lineage, out of the scorpion lineage. He so we knew that we were dealing with the properties from that bloodline. Mm -hmm. And then what were the key ingredients to then represent Scorpion and what that bloodline was? Obviously, we didn't want to just have Scorpion 2. It, he needed to be his own thing. But we also needed those, the, the things that, he, that make him up are the things that come from, from that lineage but also allow him to be his completely his own thing. So that was the, the, the approach and the plan from, from the start. And then, so the Kunai being such an important part of the story and, and it, 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 we set it up and then we pay it off later, there was an ingredient to the way, so the, the way that wrapped together and how that handle wraps becomes what wraps him. So he's almost like, not literally, but a, but a manifestation of, of the kunai. There's blood on the kunai. And then, and then Scorpion goes to Netherrealm, he has fire. So there's this energy within the kunai as well that then as, um, as he gets hit with things, the energy builds within him and he takes the energy of that fire and, and can manifest things. So then we apply this logic of like, okay, well, what would he be like if you were playing Mortal Kombat would he be a good character to play? How do you make a good? And then we went back to that and said, all right, let's just pretend we're, that's all we're doing. Let's try and make a good character. What would that be like? Oh, that would be good if you had actually a, the ability, oh, you hit, 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 then you could manifest a certain weapon. That would be kind of good. Or a certain energy power that would be hard to, to play against. But so, um, yeah, it was just that was really the conversation that, that kept going throughout the process. Um, and, you know, and then Lewis did a great job in, in bringing that to life. And, um, um, and then, you know, Goro, there was never any pushback, but it was something we really thought about. And we had to um, be careful with Goro. He's very, he's loved. He's also wildly expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's worth noting. Uh, let me just get pra practical and boring on you for a moment. But... Um, but that's not to say that, you know, as I was saying before with Mortal Kombat, there's, there's things you can do in the Mortal Kombat canon that, that allow, it's not like everyone can just bounce back from the dead, but there's, there's, there's other versions of his species. There's other, you know, there's other good, interesting things to work with that whilst we haven't worked anything out specifically, we do know there's a real treasure trove of stuff and characters to work with there. So... Yeah. yeah, let me just leave it at that. 